Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode on Better Bots. Today, we're going to be talking about the biggest differences between Dialogflow ES, the Essentials version, and Dialogflow CX. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So the very first thing uh, to notice is the difference in pricing. So if you look at their pricing page, which I'll link in the description, uh, if we look at ES agent here, you'll see they have a trial edition and then they also have uh, an essentials edition. And so the trial edition, you'll have to check out their quotas page, uh, which they have linked right here. Uh, but basically it's just the number of requests you can make per minute. Uh, so as long as you don't have super high volume, you can honestly use this one for free. Um, but if you do have really high volume and you need to be able to uh, manage it, then you can use the essentials edition, just 0 0.002 cents per request. Now with the CX agent, uh, it's a little more expensive. They don't have a trial edition. They have 0 0.007 per request, but the first $600 are free uh, on your new project. So you won't have to pay anything for the first $600 worth of sessions that you get. So for text though, it's 0 0.007 per request. So that's the biggest difference. Uh, ES is obviously a little bit cheaper, um, but there's a big reason for that. And that's what we're going to go over next. Now, in terms of the underlying functionality of what these apps are actually for, um, they're pretty much the same. There's just a few key differences that uh, really make Dialogflow CX a little bit more powerful. Um, so in terms of intense training data, entity types, all of that, it's all the same. Um, you can also have like a knowledge section here for FAQs. Um, you can have like a training section where you list all your FAQs with ES. With CX, you can use route groups and route groups can choose, can serve as an FAQ group. Um, so they're basically just subgroups of intent routes with responses that you can choose for your agent to select from. Uh, and then in terms of responses, it's pretty much the same. You can choose a text response or uh, a fulfillment, like a webhook fulfillment or something like that. So in terms of that functionality, it's pretty much the same. Uh, and the API is really the same between the both of them. You can, it's almost the same library really. Um, so they're very similar in that matter. Now, in terms of what's really different uh, with Dialogflow CX, they focused a lot on state management. And so what that really means is CX actually stands for conversational experience. And so with Dialogflow, their goal was just to put an app around an NLU model and make it easy for anybody to send intent queries. And they did that really well. But the problem is if you have a long running conversation that needs to depend on other things they've said in the conversation, this version of Dialogflow is not really built to handle uh, long running conversations. It's really meant to be more of an FAQ style agent. Versus with Dialogflow CX, you can neatly group all of your conversation steps into pages just like this. So this is just a simple booking bot. This is just asking to book an appointment, but you can see that they're always gonna start from a single place um, and they will have several different routes that they can follow but it allows me to control the state of the conversation so that if they say something here and then it, they take a while to get back to me, but they got here in the conversation, it's not going to restart all the way back at the conversation and, and act as if it's never talked before to this person. It's going to remember that using the session ID and the page that they're on. Um, so that's a huge advantage with Dialogflow CX is that you do have that ability um, to set multiple routes and it'll follow the path that you determine. You can even set multiple flows. So that way, if you have just completely different routes, depending on what the person chooses, you can even set a completely different row. Uh, so that's a big benefit of Dialogflow CX um, as well. And then of course there's the webhook. So in Dialogflow Essentials, you can have a webhook here. You can have a fulfillment webhook. Um, but the problem is you can only have one webhook. So you can either choose the webhook URL or the inline editor, but you can't have both turn on at the same time. Uh, I don't believe they may have changed that now, uh, but either way, you're still limited to this webhook alone versus uh, with webhooks and Dialogflow CX, you can have as many webhooks, or I'm sorry, you can have up to a hundred webhooks per agent. Uh, so with a hundred webhooks per agent, you can have several different events that you want to set up. We use it for offering times from a calendar and actually scheduling an appointment that somebody said they want on a calendar through the API. You can do all of that. You can also have a fallback webhook. You can set custom events uh, for a webhook. There's a lot of things that you can do um, with webhooks and you can set those webhooks on every single page. So you can actually have conditional webhooks that only will fire if they are in this page and they are on a route that you 
um, specify. So it gives you a lot more context control. Um, so that way you can be a lot more in depth with the training that you provide to the Dialogflow CX agent. Now, the next biggest difference that you'll notice is that with Essentials Edition, you can actually only have uh, one agent per project. And that might not seem like a big deal to you, uh, but if you want to have several different agents for several different use cases, you'll have to have one in each project. Uh, and the problem with that is that you can only have five Google Cloud billing accounts active at one time or five projects uh, linked to any Google Cloud billing account at one time. Um, so you'll run, in, you'll run out of projects pretty quick with that versus with Dialogflow CX. You can have as many agents as you want. As you can see, I have lots and lots of agents here. Um, so that's obviously a big advantage to having Dialogflow CX is you can have several different agents with one single uh, Google Cloud project to keep all your billing in one place. Um, and you can split test and try different agents out uh, very, very easily. So that's a big bonus for Dialogflow CX. Now, I don't want you to think there's no benefit to the Essentials version. Like I said, most people will use it for free. Uh, if you look at their quotas and limits page here, uh, the quotas for the Essentials agent is 180 requests per minute. Um, and that's pretty high for most people. Um, if you're above that, then paying the 0 0.002 per request doesn't probably won't bother you too much. Um, but for the most part, people will fall under the trial edition, so they'll never actually have to pay for it. So that's definitely a benefit of Dialogflow Essentials. But another benefit is that because it was the first and it's been around for the longest time, their integration list is a lot lot longer uh, than Dialogflow CX. So they have native integration with a lot of text-based uh, apps like Twilio, uh, which this is actually the audio side. So on the audio side, they have a lot of integrations as well. But on the text-based side, you can do, they have a native uh, web demo that you can do. They have Facebook, Workplace, Telegram, Slack, all these different kinds of integrations, uh, lots of open source integrations. So uh, on the integration side, Essentials definitely beats uh, CX because if you look at CX and go to their uh, integrations tab, they only have three of each. Uh, and I don't know of any plans for them to expand it. Hopefully they do. That would be really convenient. But for the most part, if you want to implement this, uh, you usually have to do so uh, with your own custom integration. So that's kind of the downside of using CX. It's much more powerful, um, but you do have to do a lot of the integration yourself, uh, or you have to have somebody who knows how to do the integration do it for you. So um, that's it. That's mostly uh, the major differences between Dialogflow CX and ES. Of course, I prefer Dialogflow CX just because it's a much more powerful uh, tool. You, you can also get an analytics uh, report every month for how many people are using it. You can get a change history. You can get validation. This is automatic warnings of your NLU to let you know if there's any issues with conflicts or anything like that in your training data. Uh, you can set up test cases, environments. There's lots of things you can do here. And it's a very robust API. Uh, so, and with their recent price change to 0 0.007 uh, per request, I mean, it's you're, we're spending very, very little on it. So highly recommend checking more out. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Uh, and thanks for watching.